Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to go over really quickly and sending alerts in VVHS. Why uh, making the appropriate selections on alert recipients is important um, for either narrowing uh, the amount of people or the types of people that get an alert or ensuring that as many people as possible that are qualified receive the alert. Uh, I'm just using an example here. Um, Okay, so I just put in a generic <clears throat> alert subject. When I'm coming to the alert recipients, you have the choice of either sending in an individual alert or a group alert. Um, for the purpose of choosing groups and roles, um, obviously you're gonna choose uh, a group alert. Uh, some uh, MRC unit coordinators, after they have assigned volunteers to positions, um, particularly Paula and Fairfax, She'll come and send an alert to the volunteers that have been assigned to that position. So she'll come in and send an individual alert to the 10 vaccinators that had been assigned to the pod on Thursday. She'll say, you've now been assigned to this position. See, you know, details for your deployment um, instructions. So it's a confirmation that you've been assigned. Please show up if you're not available. Please click unavailable. So that could be um, a good reason to use an individual alert is to, you know, re-alert people that are being assigned to specific roles when you don't need to just do a mass anybody and everybody. But I'm going to choose um, a group alert. Now, based on if you have a local health district access or you have regional access. Um, you'll be able to select or not select districts, and you will probably see localities um, here as well. As a state coordinator, I don't see localities, I just have districts. So I'm going to come down here, make a selection on, we have just kind of a, a test district um, in their UVA old when we had a UVA MRC unit. As I, I have talked, if you watched in a previous video about assigning volunteers to MRC level three COVID, um, you'll notice that that level has been added in this option. So individuals, after we review their profiles, people that typically are in MRC level four, so they have out of state license, their license has expired, we will be able to scrub that list and move people to MRC, to medical level three COVID. So that means for the purpose of COVID response, we are extending um, your, their ability to vaccinate if they have an out-of-state license or if they have retired. And when we assign them, um, then if we're looking at sending an alert out to all registered nurses or all medical volunteers that have the ability to have a license or, or have in the eyes of um, state government, a potentially valid license, then we would come over here and choose medical level one, two, three, level three COVID. If we would be interested in using people that are not licensed, that perhaps could help us with screening or monitoring at the end of a clinic, so they might, you know, uh, be a medical student or EMS provider, then we would choose level four. We're only looking for trying to determine whether or not, you know, medical volunteers could help vaccinate, then we would choose all of those levels. Of course, we want to choose MRC level one, two, three. You can obviously move that back and forth. So, Levels one, two, three in the MRC level means that they've completed a background investigation. We have an orientation um, completed, and hopefully they have some form of identification. Uh, I know many of the unit coordinators working very hard and trying to make sure people get identification, or they might be picking up identification when they come to the pod itself. If you had selected MRC level four, um, that means you're going to be deploying volunteers that will not have met the criteria to be deployable. Um, there's there's risk in doing that, of course, is that someone shows up and they don't have a background in this investigation and they're not a good person and you wouldn't have approved them. 
But for some reason, if you said, okay, I've already sent alert to all of my deployable people, and I'd like to see, you know, I'm doing prepare, preparing in advance for a clinic that's next week, right? It's next Thursday, not this coming up Thursday. And, and I think I have time to move volunteers from an MRC level four to an MRC level three. Okay, I can move people from a four to three, and I'm considering doing that. Then you would choose what I recommend is you send an alert out specifically to your MRC level four volunteers rather than clump them into your deployable. You do a separate alert and you say you've not yet met the requirements to be deployable, but if you could meet the requirements, we could possibly use you next Thursday. And then and that might motivate some people to move over from the not deployable to the deployable status. If you've selected or you've you've entered your volunteers into groups and roles correctly, um, you can really use them, the groups and roles to target. You know, if you don't know um, if anyone has been using groups, you can always default to all, and it means that it doesn't matter um, if anyone was placed in a group. Right now, we are being very um, careful and in making sure that volunteers are assigned to the roles based upon their ability to be vaccinated. So if I'm looking for people that have already been checked off, they completed all of the requirements to be a vaccinator, the knowledge and skills, then we're putting them COVID vaccinator. If we have the ability at the pod to do skills checkoffs, then we are gonna put COVID-19 vaccinator skills check needed. And so that would, that would allow us to deploy people that have already gotten the skills checked and then the people that um, need to have their skills checked. And then I would go ahead and hit continue and then enter in all the information as you typically would um, for any alert. So that's how you can use the groups um, the roles, the MRC levels, and the medical levels to uh, determine who can be deployed as a medical volunteer to support vaccination response efforts.